very few people are going to say, give me that dog that hunts those few days out of the year that I actually get to hunt and the rest of the time I'll put up with a maniac. Ron Herring, my wife Tracy, um, you saw my two kids were in here before. Um, our dog is Hank, the Springer Spaniel. He is four, he's gonna be five in June. Um, training a dog has been fun, but a challenge. I'm not a patient person. <laughs> when I want something- No, he's today, not. It's gonna happen today. I know him pretty well, he's not very patient. Um, so training a dog doesn't work that way, so that's been a challenge for me probably more than Hank. Hank's a, a very smart dog. I'm the problem majority of the time. Um, but I've been wanting to do this with Jeremy for a couple of years and I've, I haven't done it for the fact of exactly what he said. I didn't think Hank's good enough to do a next steps course, um, but I feel like we've got him pretty good where we can take him to baseball fields, we can take him camping, I can play fetch, not play, but I can have him retrieve in a campground with people around. So I'm confident in him, but there's a lot to do yet. And back up, back up three years, do you think you could have done that when he was a year old at your first workshop? No, the first workshop was, that was, Stressful. That was a lot of work. It wore out by the end of that weekend. That's a intense little deal for a couple of days. But um, no, I, I think this is exciting because it is relaxed, and you can judge our dogs, you know, based on where they're at, and work with each individual dog to to take us where we need to go, which is, which is good. I'm not a bird hunter. I am a whitetail freak, maybe an addiction. My wife says, but that's what I live for. So I wanted a shed dog. When I take my shotgun out of the gun cabinet, Hank goes ballistic, and if I shoot a pigeon off the silo, it's the best thing in the world to him. But he doesn't get that way with sheds. He'll find them, and he'll, he'll go out and train with me on it, but his excitement is birds, and I don't, I don't bird hunt, ever. So he's got that in him. Um, sure. But try to build off of that and get him excited about the sheds too. So that's one of my hopes with this, is to figure out how to get him excited over an antler versus a pigeon off the silo, or a bird. This is just something I'm not interested in. Oh man, good luck. Yeah, I mean, right. He picked a bird dog. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're and right I'm on. Like, put You're that right on. in that dog. Yeah. And yeah. We love Springers. We had one prior to this that we didn't train. Um, this is really my first dog or our first dog that we're putting work and time into to say we want this good dog. Sure. Yeah. And above and beyond the hunting part of it, you had said camping. You didn't take the dog camping. And like, so, you know, you deer hunt a lot. You're, you're from like the average person, Brian, how many days do you spend in a 365 year day doing something related to deer? I'm going to say at least 140. Really high percentage. Anybody here? I mean, Ron, Ron, that might push Ron. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, so, so you, you do, you are as avid of a deer hunter as I'm, as I know. But at the same time, let me ask you this: If the dog shed hunted, and I don't know what your, you know, your ideal expectations from a shed hunting perspective, but you couldn't take the dog camping, you couldn't have the dog in the house, you couldn't, um, you couldn't let the dog out in the morning to go to the bathroom before work because you're afraid that he's gonna run off, he doesn't listen. Like, you, you can't enjoy the dog in anything else except shed hunting. How many days did you shed hunt this spring? 12. Okay, so you would have been able to use your dog 12 days this year. Right. Would you be happy to say, I'll trade everything else to have 12 days of shed hunting and, the, and then the, you do the math quick on it, the 353 days or whatever it is, I can't, I can't handle the dog. What's, what, what brings more sanity to your house? Hunting, <laughs> having the dog be able to do normal stuff. Yeah. And if you pick up a few sheds with them, uh, on those 12 days out, great. Like I think that's one, one thing that we, we overlook with our hunting dogs is, I hear, I hear people talking so much about hunting dogs and that's whether it's shed hunting, bird hunting, it doesn't matter, whatever you're doing. And very, very few people will, I think if they're being honest, very few people are gonna say, 
give me that dog that hunts those few days out of the year that I actually get to hunt and the rest of the time I'll put up with a maniac and truly be happy. Like, is it, is it nice to have that dog that'll hunt for you? For sure. But I think they're, they're, they're a lot more than just that. And I think the, I think they're a lot, they think they're a lot more than that. I mean, they love the hunt as much as we do, but I bet you there's very few of the dogs out there that don't mind being able to come into the house and rest their head on your lap at night when you're watching TV. Like, that brings me a lot of, a lot of relief and a lot of enjoyment. So, so, but, but that doesn't mean we discount the idea of hunting and we go, well, and we just hope it works. I think we work towards it. But I think the other part of it that is going to allow you to have the dog that you enjoy, the other, that part of it, you have to have that anyway if you want to go and hunt with them. So they kind of work, they kind of work hand in hand. They kind of like one, one, one hand washes the other there a lot.